And it sounds like you guys are living together. So you, you meet the statue for domestic partners. And you do have injury. And both an independent witness, probably the next one we're going to talk to as well, which we haven't talked to yet, but one of the ones we did talk to, and your own companion, have made it clear that she was the primary aggressor and that she was striking you and you just received injuries. You haven't admitted to striking her, she has not admitted to striking her, the witness did not see you strike her. So at this point, you're the victim of a domestic assault, and even, if you, and even if you didn't want to pursue this, we don't have a choice. The best thing we can do to not, the lawsuit we have to charge her doesn't say we have to put her in jail, okay? But it also says we have to separate, there's no contact order, and we have to put her in jail if we cannot separate. And there's no problem here, you guys can't afford to live in the bed together. How are we supposed to separate her? Right? Now, I don't want to take this small 20, what is she? She's a 22 year old. 22 year old blonde hair, hair blue eyed jail. You could definitely defend yourself against, but at the same time, we can't say because you're a male and she's a female, we can't treat this different than if you were the male hitting her. Or we got to treat the same. Yeah, no. So she's kind of in a tough spot. So unless you have an idea about how she could not go to jail and be separated, do you have friends in town? Somewhere she could stay? Tomorrow, if you want to, it's up to you. you can can go I go to jail? You can't because we don't have a charge for you. Now, tomorrow, if you wanted to be with her again tomorrow... I'm going to take your radio. <laughs> if you want to be with her again tomorrow, because it's after five, so our office is closed, you can go to the police department and fill out a waiver to drop the no contact order so you guys can still be together, which is going to have a court date online. In a week or two, she's going to have to show up for a court date online and answer. The prosecutor might drop it. They might say, you're, if you, for example, if you're not willing to pursue it, that's your decision. I don't say it definitely is. I'm not gonna pursue anything. I'm not gonna say I love her. It's just a problem. I'm sorry that I had to get so public. Um, but uh, so I just want to get like the checklist of things I gotta do to get rid of this. So, so she went back. Court date. Well, she'll get a paper with a court date. How do I get rid of it? <laughs> well, the court date has to be attended in order for them to decide whether they need to continue or drop it. The first is just an initial appearance and say, Are you who we think you are? Yes. Here's the, do you understand the charges that brought against you? Yes or no? Yes or no? The answer. Uh, do you have an attorney? Yes or no? Do you need one? And then from there, she can she can ask to speak to the prosecutor. The prosecutor might be contacting you and say, Hey man, I, I know she's 110 pounds soaking wet and you're a big strong guy. And we understand you're not even wanting to pursue this, but the cops have to call the statute. How, you know, what, what, in the interest of you and justice for you, the victim, what do you think? And they can decide to still prosecute. Or they can decide to drop it, or they can decide to give her a plea and make it kind of go away if she behaves somehow. But that still has, does not eliminate the first court appearance that she has to attend, which thankfully for you guys is going to be online. So, you don't have to, so if you're out of town, here's Okay, I wasn't going to do any more tonight, but then I watched just a couple more minutes and I saw this. You saw the circles that I put in earlier? Watch his hands. I think I figured out what's off to me about him. Watch his hands. Those are not confident hands. Those are confused hands. Those are scared hands. Those are almost ringing um, with nervousness. And that may be the tension in his body that I'm also seeing that is throwing me off would be the nervousness. It's hyper exaggerated and it almost comes across as he's being overly compliant because he's overly nervous. And then he is legitimately confused as they try to explain this to him. See, he's just fidgety, he's confused, but his shoulders are down now. He's not as nervous anymore. His shoulders down, he's trying to compost the material they're giving to him. He is confused. He has no idea how this works, and they have to go through it step by step. As a matter of fact, he asks for a checklist. So he is stating, I don't know how to do this. This terrifies me. You can tell it from his body language. So is that perhaps what I was picking up? that was throwing me off was all of these mixed together that came off really as hyper rigid overly compliant too nice possibly i don't know this kind of is making me think that he has a victim mentality within himself he is acting like the woman that's getting beat that just got told her husband doesn't have to stay the night in jail and now they want to find out every way that they can help them because now they know they don't have a barrier there. But he actually goes and, and like is willing to like 
how do I waive this? How do I get it done? He doesn't want her fingerprinted. He wants the least harm to come to her at all. Now, he either really loves her or he's terribly scared of this occurring to her and what ramifications it may have on him and their relationship. I see real fear and confusion in his body language here, though. And a little bit more honesty because it's just him interacting with the police and it's not got him thinking about her emotional status and what she may have said and what he should say and I see him just interacting as totally confused about how to handle this and not knowing how to handle this but he's very look at those hands he's in protective mode and he's confused look at that face he's he's got waylaid by this so you know that's just um interesting little tidbit that really shocked me when, when I went two three more minutes in all the behavior when he got calmed down and the shoulders dropped and the nerves evaded what I see is confusion and fear and he's wringing his hands I mean he I see I see some victim behavior here as well I'm flabbergasted I mean like I did not anticipate this so now I need to watch the next one here we go I don't want her to go to jail. Well, if, he, if she goes to jail, it's like, uh, it, that, that, that goes down somewhere instead of her going to a hotel, right? If you did a um, citation, it would be... It kind of depends. So if she goes to jail, they're going to book her. And they'll take her fingerprints yeah. and they'll go out in front of this street. And then if they, if, if they don't convict her, then it will just show that it was dismissed. Like, it was going to show up in a criminal history, but the charge was dismissed. If she was found guilty, it'll show up that she was guilty of criminal history. But... The charge, will, the charge itself will show up on her criminal history until she gets the expunged. Now, even if we give her a ticket, we're still going to take a fingerprint and it's still going to show up. Either way, it's going to show up. There's no way around a Class A. Or is this a Class B? This is Class B. But Some they do require fingerprint on it. Yeah. Okay, so the other part is, is if you contact her or she contacts you, she can be charged with a Class A. Well, which is a little bit different, but it doesn't come to If you, you were to contact her and she responds to you, then she can get a new charge yeah. for violating her contact. No contact order doesn't restrict you, it restricts her. So if you go talk to her and we find out, and you're not in trouble, you should be in trouble. So it's going to be too interesting. That all makes sense? No, I'm getting it all. It's a lot. I really quickly, no, no, I understand. Yeah, I'm getting it all. I'm just trying to figure out a way through. You don't know anyone in town? You guys been around long? No, I don't know anyone in town. If you went... I don't think CK will take it with CK the aggressor. No. There's a window shelter. I'm curious. You can find out. Say, hey, she doesn't have to go. If you did the citation, she, like, say she drove off in the, she could drive off in this car. We could give you a ride somewhere. So I got my backpack. It sucks for you. I got my backpack. You can spend I, the you, night. You want to drive me to Delicate Art? Does she have a good driver's license? Is she there? Yeah, she has a driver's license. Yeah. You yeah. Can with your vehicle? And, yeah, she can help. Boom. Then you'd kind of be homeless for the night. And I mean, I can't talk to her at all. Well, and I've got to do the, the thing so I can't go camping. We can tell her what it is that she needs to do to get, to get through all this and then let her know what the plan is. Here, here's the problem, though. If we take you up to Delicate Arch, you're going to be hoofing it from Delicate Arch all the way down to Moab Center Street so that you can yeah. fill out that paperwork. Because if you're not there by noon tomorrow, you're going to be looking at Monday morning. morning. It's uh, early on Friday. So yeah. You, you'd be looking at Monday morning before you could actually see her right yet. Again, we're not trying to make your life hard. No. This is written statute. There's nothing yeah, a lot of about it. It's designed to protect victims of domestic assault. Not everybody's the same. This is different yeah. than normal. But we have to treat everything the same. And that's how it is. You just can't get more hotel. No. Uh, very, very, very little money we have, for sure. Um, you want me to I'll call CK then? Okay. So here he is. And they're telling him, you know, we don't want her to go to jail. 110 pound blonde blue eyed and he's like well if she goes to jail does she get fingerprinted does it go down somewhere is it going to be on a record he ex like over extends himself to make this the least detrimental to her the least inconveniencing the least scary for her he's willing to place himself like he, he has to go to jail in place of her now he's saying do you have to do these things how can we do this to where it's the least impactful on her and her life and they're telling him now that, you know, there are things that have to be done because the report has been done and it's a violent act. Um, it's a physically violent act. It has to go through court. He can request to dismiss it, 
but the state's prosecutor, you know, you're you're going to have to deal with it at some point. You're at least going to have to have one court date to deal with it and see if they'll waive it. If not, there may be more, but you can waive the no contact and pick her up tomorrow, but you'll still have to go to court. So he's confused. He's trying to process this. His shoulders are down now. He's more confident. He's, he's not as scared. He's not as tense. And I'm seeing more concern, worry, trying to protect himself as well as hands are over his groin and he's wringing his hands when he gets nervous about what this is causing but it's i see some victim stuff in here guys i see some victim like like it's like the woman that's scared that her husband might get out tonight and not stay a night how, how okay well how do i make this the least harmful on them possible so that i don't catch heck when they get home can you help me can you how many times have we heard women say that so he even opts to let her have the van and walk, but there's no way he can walk, go to file the paperwork he needs to file and pick her up so that they can waive the no contact and be back on the road. It's not possible, and that stresses them out even more. So he has to come up with a plan somehow. Now this is where I'm going to stop for the night because this kind of threw me for a loop, and I'm going to watch up to this point again several more times um, so that I get into the scenario and because when you watch it multiple times you start to see the layers of behavior but ladies and gentlemen we have a curveball i'm seeing victim behavior out of this man now it's not so uh, disjointed and, and confusing for me now i think i was not understanding that he was being overly compliant from fear i thought he was being overly compliant from trying to throw something off or cover something i think he may be overly compliant from fear and also, if you leave me a nasty comment, can you just like balls up and leave it so I can respond? We can talk about it. It's fine. Y'all have a good night.